Hi everybody, happy Sunday. Today on The Weekend Warrior, we're gonna talk about poop tests. What? Well, poop tests are an excellent way for your integrative doctor to figure out what's going on with your child, to understand the root cause for your child's recurrent ear infections, ADHD, behavior issues, eczema, constipation, and so on and so forth. But that doesn't really make sense for just me to explain in air, so I thought we can go through a few examples and see how this can help you or your child achieve wellness without medications. Because I mean, let's be honest, you hear about probiotics, have you gone out and bought probiotics? Do you even know if they're actually helping your child? I mean, have you wondered about digestive enzymes? Could these be good for my youngster? Uh, Food sensitivities, are they really real? Can they really affect my child's intestines? Oh, how about those parasites, right? Because if you're on Facebook, on some of those groups, man, everyone's talking about some parasites and all about all these things. Does your child have parasites? Besides, you put them before you put them on some detoxing thing that you read from someone whose child benefited from it. Shouldn't we get some hard data before we give kids herbal things? All right. Well, let's start looking at the first page of the stool test. As you can see in this youngster, we have a whole area that's green, yellow, red. What we wanna see in the green, we wanna see a lot of of these bugs to be threes and fours. Notice how lactobacillus is a two plus, enterococcus is a one plus, clostridium is a one plus. This is the beneficial flora. These are the good guys, we want lots of them. The yellow zone, An occasional one is okay, but in this child, there's four and there's three pluses and two pluses, way too many. So we have dysbiosis, which means there's an imbalance of the bad versus the good. We further look at the red zone, and in this case, we don't have any red critters. Look at another child's poop. In this case, we have four plus bacterioides, no bifido, which is really important to so many things. Two plus E. coli, one plus lactobacillus, four plus enterococcus and clostridium. We have a couple of characters in the yellow zone where we said we really shouldn't see more than one. And also in here, we have Klebsiella at three plus. So as you can see in this child, we have significant dysbiosis. You will also see that the yeast culture is showing some Uh, critters as well, but we'll cover that next. One more thing, when you look at your probiotics, it says it has a lot of lactobacillus species. This child was taking a lot of probiotics and looky here, it's not doing anything. So all that money has been spent and it's not even benefiting the child. Next, we're looking at yeast and we'll see that under the yeast culture in this child specifically, two different species have been cultured and under the microscope, tons of yeast. This is so incredibly important uh, in children that have uh, chronic issues. I cannot explain to you how many times once we correct the yeast situation, our children that have autism, ADHD, horrible eczema, and other skin disorders um, get better. And without this test, we just would not know. Now, furthermore, I really enjoy this test that I do through a very specific company, Doctors Data, because they give me yeast and it is three stool samples. Look here, many, many, many yeast is very difficult to find in culture um, on stool testing. And in this child is in three stool specimens. If I only had one stool specimen, oftentimes this is negative and then the other two are positive, you'll be missing yeast and therefore you will lose an opportunity to treat um, this issue in this child effectively. Now in here, this is the test I was referring to that we look for the critters, for protozoa, nematodes, cestodes, um, flukes, because I can't say that word, uh, the additional organisms over parasites. Uh, We're looking for other markers of infection and immunoassay. So this is a very comprehensive look at various critters and parasites that could be in the intestines. Then we look at digestion and absorption. And in this child right here, the elastase 364, yes, it is above 200, but based on this child's symptoms, that number should be really more at 500. So he will go on um, 
a pancreatic enzymes. We look at fast stains, um, if there's any fat in the poop, muscle fibers, vegetable fibers, carbohydrates. This gives us a, an indication of absorption, which is really important because there's two parts to uh, nutrition. One is eating it, second is absorbing it. We look at inflammation and we wanna see is this child food sensitivities that we found really causing a problem and lo and behold, he's got elevated uh, lactoferrin, calprotectin and lysozyme. He does not have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. What he has is severe inflammation from his food intolerances, which incidentally were not found on traditional food allergy testing, but on the functional medicine allergy intolerance test, which I've covered in a different video. This is a different child who also has intestinal inflammation from his food allergies. Again, traditional allergy testing was negative to anything. It was a different story in our office. And in here, we're looking for immunology. Secretory IgA is 55.0. It looks like it's normal. However, this child has recurrent illnesses and has been on numerous antibiotics and uh, their concerns about immunodeficiency. He has 55 in the secretory IgA category. This number should be more like 150 in order to help his immune system uh, function properly. But I don't bore you to death. We also get, when we have those critters that we were seeing in the yellow and red zone, we also get sensitivities to herbals, which is here, and also traditional antibiotics. So we have the endobacter in this child, and we can see here which herbals we can actually use successfully. And you'll see in this child, colloidal silver is great and grapefruit seed extract and oil of oregano not as much black wool not, not as much but this helps us tailor the um, herbal supplements to his gut dysbiosis rather than generally speaking to the population I almost never use antibiotics uh, to treat this because the herbals are really effective, especially when we use the ones that are specific to each child and each critter that is um, causing this child's illness. I hope this was a helpful tutorial on how I use stool testing in my clinic because each child is different and in functional medicine we don't do a general approach, we do an individualized approach and this test is one more way um, that we individualize the testing for you and your child so we can treat the dysbiosis or gut imbalance specifically to your child's gut to provide him or her with the appropriate probiotics to decrease inflammation, to give them digestive enzymes when they're appropriate, and work on their immune system in a very specific way rather than, hey, I read this online and it worked for so-and-so. Anyway, I hope that um, this was helpful and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.